Okay, we've heard of the gut-brain axis, like the relationship between the gut and the brain, what's called the enteric brain, but there's actually a link between the gut and the lungs. This is what's really interesting, and in a time when a lot of us are really focused on our lung health and paying attention to that, I think that it is important to note how important fiber is for lung health. And up until like 2015, 2016, this wasn't really talked about all that much, like candidly. It was just no one really thought anything of it because again, just like I thought, two very separate systems of the body, they're probably not correlated all that much. Well, there was a study that was published in the Annals of the American Thoracic Society that was published in 2016. And it took a look at the relationship between fiber consumption and what is called forced vital capacity as well as forced expiratory volume. Okay, what those two markers are, in this case FVC for short and FEC for short, that is how essentially efficient your lungs are. You can measure airway, you can measure the forced exhalation, you can measure how quickly you can exhale, which is a great indicator of how the lungs are operating, how the airway is operating. So this study took a look at 1,921 people, okay? And it found at the end of the study that those that consumed the top 25% of fiber, so of all the people, people that consumed the most fiber, they had a significant increase in their overall force vital capacity and their force expiratory volume compared to the bottom tertile of fiber intake. So bottom 25% versus top 25% was a difference of 82 milliliters and 129 milliliters in terms of those two scores. Now, you probably don't even want to wrap your head around what the scores really mean and all this, but what it essentially means is that somehow fiber was affecting how we breathe. It sounds so unbelievably unreal. They also found there was less airflow restriction in the group that had more fiber. So there's a few different things here, but as you start looking into the data more, you see, oh, okay, well maybe there's an inflammatory response. Maybe that's what's happening. Because when we look at the lungs in general, if you look at even some potential situations like bronchitis or asthma, they're largely associated with an inflammatory response that is activated by some kind of toxin particle or whatever that flares it up. So we know that there's inflammation that's related to this, but we didn't really think about the fact that our gut microbiome and fiber intake can modulate inflammation in different ways. Okay, we have what are called short-chain fatty acids. Okay, these are things like propionate, uh, butyrate, acetate. They are a byproduct of fiber getting broken down by our gut. And the more diverse that our gut microbiome is, the more that we can break down fibers into these short-chain fatty acids. Because it's been fairly well documented that short-chain fatty acids can influence glucose metabolism. So short-chain fatty acids, again, can influence how our cells take up glucose. They can influence uh, lactate metabolism in terms of intense exercise. They can influence fatty acid oxidation, how we utilize fats. So it makes sense that they would be able to influence uh, an inflammatory response to a certain degree. So it turns out that a diverse diet and having a high amount of fiber is at least correlated with better overall potential lung health. I always use that word potential because we don't say anything absolute. Now people's minds, whenever we talk about gut health or anything related with the microbiome, their brains automatically go to taking a probiotic. I really do sincerely believe that fiber is going to be significantly better. Being able to get the diet, being able to get that diversity of food that you need, always being able to work as close to the earth as possible. But I will go out on a limb and say that the probiotic that I recommend is probably literally the only probiotic that I would ever use is going to be one called Seed. And I put a link down below. It is a symbiotic. They are a sponsor on this channel and they fund and do a lot of microbiome research themselves, which is really, really cool. So they have a capsule inside of a capsule. So if you look at it, very cool technology. So they have a multi-stage system where you've got a prebiotic and a probiotic. It's called a symbiotic. So anyhow, I don't want to go on too much about them, but I did want to be able to extend a 15% discount if you want to try them out. So that link down below using code THOMAS15, that first line in the description box down there, will save you 15% off of the Seed Daily Symbiotic. So definitely recommend you check them out. Again, full disclaimer, I'm not saying that taking this probiotic is going to have this effect on your lungs. Not at all, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're someone that is taking care of your gut and you're looking for that microbial diversity and you're working towards that, it is a good step as it's a product that I definitely put my stamp of approval on. So that link is down below in the description.
So what's interesting, if we start looking at the proposed mechanisms as to why increases in fiber affected this forced vital capacity and forced expiratory volume, well, you see that the people that consumed more fiber in the study also had lower levels of what's called C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is an indicator of like chronically high levels of inflammation. So if your CRP is elevated, you typically have high levels of chronic inflammation. Okay, what happens is interleukin-6 and other cytokines will actually travel to the liver and they can signal CRP to uh, increase. Okay, and one of many ways that this can happen. So if you go to the doctor, you can ask them to look at your CRP and you can see kind of what your inflammatory levels are. But there was a study that was published in the journal Thorax that took a look at CRP and it found that it was inversely correlated with lung function. Okay, so what this is indicating is that when CRP is high, lung function can come down. And when CRP is low, lung function can improve. Again, this is all correlational, and we're all just starting to learn this, and researchers are really starting to dive into it now, but it is what it is, right? We have to take, take this and kind of run with it and learn about it. Now, there's also another potential mechanism at play here. There is a ratio that is called the Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio. Firmicutes is fairly widely documented as a not so good bacteria associated with obesity, associated with inflammation, and then you have Bacteroidetes, which is associated more with being lean and possibly lower levels of inflammation. So when you have this good ratio of higher amounts of Bacteroidetes and lower amounts of Firmicutes, you have the ability to neutralize or inhibit a little bit more of what are called neutrophils. These neutrophils are immune cells that get activated by particles, maybe if like pollen or whatever, they get activated by particles and then they release proteins that make us feel a certain way in terms of our lungs, right? So I'm gonna use a hypothetical example here. It doesn't necessarily apply directly to this situation, but it paints a visual. If someone is asthmatic or has bronchitis, it might not be inflamed at every point in time, but if it gets acted upon by a particle or a toxin or something, then the immune system, these neutrophils, will secrete proteins that will ultimately trigger the inflammation. And then you become a little bit more symptomatic. So by looking at the gut microbiome and the potential modulation of these neutrophils, maybe that's another avenue in which this is working. So again, I know I'm sounding like I'm just like covering my rear here by saying this a bunch, but I truly am. Okay, the research is still new, but at the end of the day, it's something that I've always said. A diverse plethora of foods and a diverse microbiome is probably a very good thing. I'll see you tomorrow.